Okay, this is a battery update for the four phase power superconductive grid. Okay, something interesting is going on. I've let the batteries charge and settle, and now we're gonna do a second heat cycle. This phone is the one, that, the pad, one I use all the time, as you can see, it's loaded. This one is relatively new, and this phone was an old dead phone, the battery. But I'd like you to see something. It says four hours and 38 minutes left and it's only 45% charged. It's taking an extremely long time to charge this phone. So let's plug this one in first. Okay. Now it's charging and it says Seventeen hours since the last time it was fully charged. So it's never lasted seventeen hours. It's only lasted a couple of hours before. So it's obviously something is changing in this dead battery. Now we're just gonna let it charge and let the chart um, let it tell us. Oh, and I'd like to thank Doug. Uh, white because the, the this is the date I didn't know that before this is the date of when the charge is okay we're just gonna put that there and I don't trust this battery so we're back in the explosive fireproof container kind of hope well I hope everything goes okay but I would not be disappointed if we could see some fire. It's not really what we want to see, but that's just kind of what a guy thinks. So let's look at the battery of this one. Okay, it says 50 hours left on the battery. We're just going to have to see. This one. And this one says 50 hours left on the battery. 100%. So we're just going to leave them unplugged and see what they, what they are. After this, I'll do a load test on the batteries with a little uh, fan that you plug into the phone or a light or something that'll draw them down so we can do a load test on the batteries. But right now, this would be the, uh, we're in the middle of the second heat cycle. So after they draw down, we're gonna charge them one more time. But I'm gonna show you something. Now, Making some tea. Look how rich that tea is. Okay. It definitely works at the atomic level. Now the generator is calmed down. It's being put under load. And it has, uh, we're back to the linear wave pattern. So you got to see where the bow tie of superconductivity is and where it goes through its cycles. Okay, remember what we're doing. This is carbon in the wire. We're converting the carbon to graphene. It's really that simple, ladies and gentlemen. This is the representation of what you're seeing on the oscilloscope. As a reminder, there's the tunneling effect. There's the tunneling effect of the cooper pucta chains where the graphene is tunneling through the wire in a superconductive fashion, protecting the resistance. 
Once again, this is the Meissner effect. And as you can see, the yellow is the magnetism, the blue is the superconductivity, and the red is actually where the electrons are actually going. They're tunneling in the superconductive effect. This is another representation of the Meissner effect. This is what they think was going on, where the superconductivity was going through and the magnetism was going around. That's not true. The field brought on by the cold superconductivity was allowing the electrons to tunnel, giving you a better representation here. And the reason it's lopsided on one side is because we check resistance from one side to the other. It flips at 26.4 terahertz, faster than the electron can get there, and a, like a revolving door. We're gonna get to the looms test in a moment, but I'm just giving you a quick rundown. Cooper pairs, Cooper puck to chains, coming through the wire in a heterodyne resonance. Cooper pairs, carbon atoms. The elect this is naturally set. These are all magnetic rings, okay? Everything is magnetic. The electrons cannot go through carbon because there's an electron in the middle. The blue is the outer electron valence. The magnet on the bottom represents the electron, magnet, the, the induced magnetism over the uh, carbon. And this represents the center two electrons in carbon. As the uh, disassociation or the um, spreading and relaxing contracting and relaxing of the carbon atoms go through, um, the electrons go through, it needs to spread open, spread open, contract, repeat. That's how heat is made. DC is one way, spreads them open. AC, boom, boom. You can throw AC a little bit further than you can throw DC. This is the representation really quick, once again, of the graphene tunneling, okay? As you can see, that is not touching. It's just hanging out there. Do you see that? This one is not magnet magnetically conducted together. That is the field of superconductivity or linear magnetism. It's been there the whole time, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the, the ground state. Okay, I cannot pick this one up. This one is the tunneling state. You see how the electron tunnels? Right through the center. So you've got plus, minus, plus, minus, ground, plus, minus. A very stable electricity. Here's the representation magnetically put together of the Cooper chairs as the Cooper Pucta chains, as the Graphene is flipped up on its side, which is flat. It has two, three, five, zero nanometer squared density. Carbon has 900 nanometers squared density. There's more graphene that can fit. But if you just take one carbon atom, put it into graphene, it makes a revolving door and allows the electrons to go through. Then when I pick up this one, you see how I've moved from here here very simple just by flipping the door these two it's very simple ladies and gentlemen now let's show you something more important you see this light it's coming off Faraday this light is coming off Pucta they're much brighter but let's just prove that this is a lux meter we're gonna put it down here underneath this light, right down here on the ground. Fifty-nine. 
let me do that one more time. 68. You've got more looms and this light is more purple. And we're not even at 120 volts yet. Four phase superconductive power over our grid. Nothing is going to happen except more efficient electricity. Okay, so let me prove that to you. This is my T. Okay, I can pretty much guarantee you those three hot plates are hot. Hot plate, 600 degrees, 500, 400, 200, 4, 5, 600. See this? I can pick that up. because it's perfect resonant heat. The steam is a little warm. <laughs> but that's a nice soak of tea. And I haven't boiled the water. Okay? Let's check the temperature of the tea. Perfect temperature of tea. Perfect resonant power. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. It's taken me a long time to bring this to the table and I'm very proud of what I'm doing. Because what I'm doing is something that is extremely important. Money set aside. I'm going to say it again because I have your attention. Here is the problem. The problem is the grid. When the electromagnetism during the day fills up the column electricity. Because Michael Faraday and Nikolai Tesla, Tesla mostly Tesla, gave us the electromagnetic spectrum. As the sun comes, it pushes down on the grid, pushes down the column. Nighttime comes, the grid's still hot. It energizes the ionosphere and stops the photosynthesis. Stopping photosynthesis, trees cannot produce their oxygen, they can't disassociate CO2, and they cannot process their water. They only draw their water at nighttime and photosynthesis only happens at nighttime. Secondarily, the cyanobacteria in our ocean during the photosynthesis cycle, it produces our oxygen. During the linear magnetic cycle, I mean the uh, electromagnetic cycle during the sun, it produces oil. If the ionosphere gets too carbon conductive, it would prefer to produce hydrogen and oil. It does not care about us. It has, it brought us our oxygen during the great oxidate, the rusting of the planet, okay? You look it up. You can look at core samples. Every time there's core samples, there's high CO2, what's missing? Oxygen, you need oxygen to disassociate CO2. What happened to the dinosaurs? They all suffocated to death. How long can you hold your breath? Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice day.